The following case study is representative of tarsal tunnel syndrome as a space occupying lesion is forced upon the posterior tibial nerve. In the anatomical review, we will be covering the medial tendons identified with the ankle. First is the posterior tibial tendon attaching to the navicular, followed by the flexor digitorum tendon, which courses to the plantar aspect of the foot, and the flexor hallucis longus tendon, which also courses to the first digit underneath the foot, followed by the neurovascular structures, first beginning with the posterior tibial nerve and its anterior and posterior branches. The neurovascular bundle also consists of typically one artery and two to three veins. The medial flexor retinaculum, which begins at the medial malleolus and inserts to the medial margin of the calcaneus. Probe position for the tarsal tunnel study should begin at the level of the medial malleolus and scanning distally. Until this neurovascular bundle is traced to the plantar aspect of the foot. Long axis images can begin by following the direction of the medial tendons and moving the probe posteriorly. Here's a corresponding transverse image at the level of the blue highlighted medial malleolus. We see a green posterior tibial tendon highlighted followed by the flexor digitorum longus with a normal physiologic amount of fluid here in blue. Highlighted are the yellow posterior tibial nerve, the red posterior tibial artery, surrounded by these posterior tibial veins, which are easily identifiable by compression and utilization of Doppler. Deep to these structures, noted in purple, is the flexor hallucis longus, which may be more difficult to identify at this level due to its more distal musculotendinous junction. So at this level, we are seeing more muscle than tendon, as we would see at the posterior tibial tendon. To further make the flexor hallucis longus tendon easier to identify, just apply flexion to the first digit. Highlighted here in white is the representative medial flexor retinaculum. Here's a Doppler at the medial neurovascular structures. If you notice that the veins are difficult to see due to low flow stay, just apply distal pressure at the proximate arch of the foot. This will force blood up towards your field of view. Utilizing the posterior tibial artery and veins as a landmark, it is easy to identify the posterior tibial nerve, in this case being compressed by a bony calculus formation. Anytime pathology is suspected, it is always important to note these abnormalities in both longitudinal as well as transverse planes. Here is a transverse image of the bony calculus, which may also be termed as a space-occupying lesion.